guys. All right, this is the first time showing you this. I'm out, actually out the back back. Um, this is probably the first time in about eight months that I've had to wear a jumper. Temperature's dropping, which is great. Other parts of the world, temperature's coming up. We're dropping. Today we're getting to a high of about 10 degrees. I love this weather. Um, and I love being out here when it's cold like this. I just love it. Oh, we're going to get into having a look at, at uh, that new Pioneer VSX 933 Dolby Atmos DDSX amplifier. I'm uh, going to have a look at the pros and cons that I think of that amplifier. Um, so yeah, we'll get into having a look at that. Might give you a little bit of a look around here. Yeah, but this is a little bit of a path, you know, along the bank, I guess you want to call it, not the money bank. But the other bank and we've had a little bit of water a bit of rain so we do actually have um, there is some water running down there so let's have a look okay it's not a lot but it's some um, and I think this is what you would call a babbling brook when the water gets a bit higher it really does sound like a babbling brook I love the sound of it all right what we'll do is uh, I'll get inside and make myself a cuppa and we'll have a look at this amplifier I just wanted to show you out here it's I think it's beautiful out here it's nice and cold I love it all right, let's look at this amp. Okay, guys, well, uh, here it is. This is the, the Pioneer, the VSX R933. So, turn it on so we'll get a bit of a display sort of thing happening there. I'll bring you in for a bit of a closer look. Um, what I'll do here is I'll go through a couple of things that uh, this thing... Uh, has within it just to let you know everything it does now this is going to be a mouthful so uh, it's not everything but it's the majority of what this thing does now first up uh, in 2019 for the price range this won an award so it's an award-winning amplifier for that price range this is not the flagship model this is sort of you know, mid to high this would be um, so yeah for the for the price range I mean it was great uh, this thing only cost me 600 bucks now, if you have a look at my other videos of the other amplifiers I've got, the minimum minimum I normally spend is three grand. Um, so, but the reason I didn't go for the flagship, I have said it in another video, is uh, I'm under instructions that I can't go too berserk in here in the lounge room. I can't have speakers hanging from the ceiling, bouncing off the walls, and popping out of the floor, and all sorts. Of, I'm not allowed to do that. So, in here, I only have. Um, seven by two channels this thing is actually a seven by two by two so you got your seven channels you got your two subs and you got your two heights that would go in the roof they're not plugged in so i'm not allowed to anyway <laughs> all right well uh first up this thing runs at 135 watts per channel so pretty beefy especially for the price range um when i run this i only have this about halfway and it's fairly loud so you can go push further if you want. Now with the, with the audio side of it, obviously uh, I will show you, it's, um, it's Atmos DDSX. I've actually got some things written down here to tell you. <laughs> so it's Atmos DDSX, Dolby True HD, Dolby Digital Plus, and the DDS side of things, it's uh, DDS HD Master, yeah, DDSX obviously, DDS ES, um, and DDS Express. I'm not sure what DDS Express is. Um, on the 4K side of things, the main reason I had to get this amp is the, the Yamaha that was sitting here. Um, it passed through 4K content, but I think it only went to 25, 26 kilohertz, and I needed I needed it to bump up to 60 kilohertz. So that's why I mainly got this, was to bump up the 4K kilohertz, plus it also beautifully passes through Ultra HD picture and Dolby Vision. Um, so it does all that. Uh, it's also got a Chromecast built in, so that works with your Google Home or your Alexa or anything like that. So it's got all the, the you know, um, the Google stuff's in it because it's inbuilt Chromecast. There are two antennas on the back of this, so that helps with, uh, shit, you know what, actually I don't even know. I haven't played with that yet. All right, so yeah, all, all up, it's actually a, a nine channel amplifier and it also it upscales your audio and your video um, now if you run say a five you know five point one five channel movie or whatever it will automatically upscale that to seven channels so all your seven channels will just kick in and the decoding within the amplifier 
um, configures it, makes it all work for you. And picture wise, you can put in something that's 720 or, or 1080, it'll actually upscale it. Uh, you won't get Ultra HD, but you'll get better than 1080. So it actually works like that, it upscales it. So that's great. So yeah, I've actually, I've watched a few movies with this and I'm really impressed. Like it's actually, um, especially for the price, like the, the, the audio quality is actually really fantastic out of this. So um, this was a, a damn well good buy. Uh, so anyone who's interested, I recommend it. Um, I did go through a few amplifiers, checking them out. And what I found was this was probably one of the best for around that price. If you want to start going better, you're getting close to the $2,000 mark and up. So, but I didn't need that in here because 2000 and up, that's when you have like your, your four Atmos, you know, ceiling firing speakers sort of thing. And I didn't need that because I'm not allowed to. So it was pointless paying all that extra money. So, oh, and also, you know, when it gets higher, you want to just start going up. You want to just start getting up to, you know, 180, 190 watts. But this at 135, man, I have a lad in here. So, it, Plenty, it's got plenty of balls in it. Okay, so this is a closer look at the amp. Uh, let's see, I'll bring her in and pan along. It's not saying Atmos or nothing like that yet because I've got no audio going into it. So it's just hit uh, stereo at the moment. Okay, I didn't show the actual unboxing of this because the day this arrive, uh, arrived, I was actually out all day, got home, it was here and I just went ahead and unboxed it because I couldn't control myself. Anyway, um, all right, here's the bad things about this. First up, the manual. Now, I know what I'm doing, so I don't really need a manual, but the manual was terrible. It basically, it was a folded sheet of paper that come out about this big, and it wasn't a book or anything like that. The manual was terrible, and it just showed the very absolute basics of what the ant does and how to get it going. Um, I just couldn't believe how bad the manual was. I'm used, used to getting manuals where they're big thick books or whatever. The manual was absolutely terrible. The next thing is the remote. That's the friggin remote. I mean that's disgusting. That, that's a terrible remote. Okay, let's compare. That other Pioneer amp that I've got, even though it was the flagship model, it's still 10 years old. That's the remote for that one. And the Yamaha amplifier I've got, that's the remote for that. You open it up, you got more buttons here. You got all, where are we? Yeah, see there, backlight. Now I understand when you get flagship models, you get backlight and all that sort of thing. That MD player I've got, that's bloody 1998, that's old. That's the remote for that. And this, which is the, the latest new amplifier, that's all the remote is. It's really basic. So, very, very basic. Um, but you've got all your on-screen display stuff, which works well. You, you, you know, you go through when you adjust things how you like it. The on-screen display is not too bad. I might bring that up and we'll have a look at that, actually. Holy shit balls! The blue screen of death! The blue screen of death when it comes to computers? Ugh. All right, let's have a bit of a look at the um, on-screen uh, display. <sighs> okay, so what we got here is we get, you got your, your system set up, your macro, or whatever the hell that is, and your networking. So if we go into um, your setups, you got all that. Input, output, assign, your speaker setup, we're going to speaker setup, you, you, you know, Configuration of that, crossover, distance, which we all know now. I do that. I uh, do set up the mic, I run the distance and the levels, and it never does it perfectly. So it gives me maybe a, I don't know, 85, 90% chance of being right, and then I go back in and I always readjust it myself to what I like. Alright, so yeah, we've got our speed configuration, so we've got our seven channels um, and as you can see here high speaker is not not selected which kind of sucks because it's there I want to use it but I'm not allowed to for some reason speaker is is at six ohms that will probably be these in wall speakers that I have which I'll show I'll show you in another video but we'll have a look anyway. Alright so now if we go to your uh, audio adjustments 
Tool, mono, mono, what the hell would you want that for? You go into your Dolby, you got your, your loudness management, so obviously that's set to on. Um, why wouldn't you have that on? Okay, now we go into over here into hardware. So it's just that, your HDMI, your Sonos, which I've never used, power management, big deal. Right, you got your multi-zone here. Now those height levels for your Atmos, you can either use it, use it as height or a zone. So in other words, you can set set another set a set of speakers in another room, and that's your zone too. If you've ever played with that, I've never really played with that, but that's where you can have music playing either in here or music from that amplifier into another room, which is your zone two. My Yamaha actually has four zones, so I could have a lounge room. Bedroom, kitchen, outside, whatever. I've never really used that though. Okay, we've got miscellaneous. Here was your tuner, remote ID, your firmware updates. Now I've already done that, so I don't need to do that again. Um, this is obviously locked into my my internet, so I've got no problems there. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's it's not uh, mind blowing or whatever. It's kind of pretty simple um, compared to a much more high tech amplifiers but this will get you by this, you know it does everything it, it, the main thing is you get your your Atmos sound happening your DDSX sound happening which actually does sound better than normally normal Dolby or whatever I think um, yeah okay I'll just show you one over here what I mean by those in wall speakers all these surrounds and the fronts and all that they're all actually in the walls so here it is here it's flush with the wall you take the panel off and there we go the, the drivers are actually um, inside the wall and I've got the sub bin over there so these things are great for mid to high you don't get great bottom end out of it but that's what the hell that's why you have a subwoofer all right I would love to swing swing this around and show you the back but it's a real bitch to actually get this cabinet around plus all my speakers uh, they go out of the amp and they go into a wall plate in the back of the wall I'll show you that all right, as you can see there, it's a wall plate and there's not a lot of give when it comes to the speaker cable. I made them as short as possible. So that's how the speakers run. They go directly into the wall. All right, there's one other downside um, actually to this amplifier. It's got six HDMI ins and it's got friggin' only one out. Idiot me, I didn't look into that enough. I assumed they all, all receivers had two HDMI outs. They don't. Um, now I run obviously HDMI to the TV and to the projector over there on the roof Which as you can see that's the JVC projector and that that is a behemoth of a projector that thing weighs a ton and it's THX certified and it's got all the bullshit It's got all the bells and whistles, but um, Normally I'd have two HDMI outs as I said one to the TV and one to that bloody monster over there But oh well so what I might have to do is uh, get a switcher box, uh, it's got to be an Ultra HD 4K switcher box so you get your HDMI in and two outs or at the moment just swap the leads over in the back of the amp but I don't want to keep doing that because HDMI plugs tend to be a little bit, you start plugging things in and out they start getting a little bit on the wobbly side so I don't want to do that. But um, that's about all I can really think of, it's, it's pointless putting on a movie and showing you or whatever you're not going to hear it. Oh, there is another downside too. The display. Uh, if you're like me, you like it to display exactly what's going on. Now, let's say you put a DSX or an Atmos movie on, it will come up and it'll say Ultra HD, Atmos, whatever, on the screen. Then it'll go away and it'll just go to basically what you're seeing here HTPC. I renamed it to Home Theatre PC because down here, uh, I don't have a Blu-ray player or whatever. Everything runs out of the computer and I've got a ton of hard drives down here and that's how everything runs. So that's what I na renamed that to. But it basically goes back to this. And all the channels come up here. At the moment, it's just a stereo with a sub. But all seven channels come out, come up there. But where it actually says Atmos or whatever, you actually have to get the remote and hit info, which comes up on the TV and you can see that it's still in Atmos or whatever. But that display doesn't stay on the amp, which kind of pisses me off. So there are a couple of downsides to the amp, but they're kind of minor. As I said, there's only one HDMI out. The remote is not that great. The manual was freaking terrible. 
and the display doesn't stay on there. But nothing that, none of that's got anything to do with the actual quality of what comes out of this thing. Like what comes out of it is fantastic, it's great. So that's about all I can think of when it comes to uh, this amp. I hope I didn't, you know, miss, miss anything. Just a few buttons on the front, which are basics. Just surround mode, stereo mode, um, pure direct, which I don't use because pure direct, I don't know, you need to look into that. I never use pure direct. What that does, it won't take Atmos or True HD or anything like that. It'll just take the actual um, raw audio and punch that through. And normally it just goes in stereo, so I never use pure direct. But yeah, there's not a hell of a lot. There's no flap on the front or whatever. That, that's obviously the flagship models that do that. All right, well, as I said, uh, yeah, this is the Pioneer VSX 933. If you're interested, I would recommend it, especially for the price. I mean, back in the day, let, let go back 10 years ago, this thing was, would have been probably about two grand or so. So uh, for the price, I said I paid about 600 bucks for this, which I think is really cheap for what you get. All right, I'll catch you on the next video. The next video is gonna be rather interesting. Um, I've ordered something. Now with this pandemic going on, I've got to wait because deliveries are going a lot slower. Uh, I ordered it yesterday, so it might come next week. But that's for another video. Bye, guys.